and there's our first ban a Moomoo from that is Aberdeen's B team uh, this this does happen to be a bit of a team kill we've got Aberdeen A versus Aberdeen B uh, Aberdeen B is going to be our blue team for today and Aberdeen A are our purple team uh, I'm just going to use the colours from now on otherwise it's going to get quite confusing they seem to have their bands well thought out as these are not taking very long at all Although this last one seemed to be thinking, we've got a good mix of players in both of these teams. Going from the uh, the join page, we've got some fairly, we've got some 12 and 1400 ELO players, and some players that don't have any rating listed at all. So we we should see some interesting plays and see how they how they're set up, and how well they work together as a team. So there we go, both bands complete. We've got a Mumu, Graves and Cassidin for our blue team and a Carly Shaco and Fizz for purple. First pick on Ash now for Aberdeen B. It's uh, Ash is known as one of the weaker champions at the moment but she does have a really strong initiation with that arrow. We should see if they can use it really well. Udu on the jungle and Nasa solo top then for our purple team. Counter picks for those two champions, or if they've already got in mind who they want. So there's Ariana, which I believe is going to be the mage pick, but as you can see, he's got some uh, some of the spells that are set up for support champions, so we could see him trading with someone later on. Or he could be playing Ariana support, which I have personally never seen before. It could be quite an interesting interesting tactic. We can see if it works out for them or not. And Warwick will be there, you go, switched his summoners. Warwick's going to be their jungler up against Uda. This is on the latest patch obviously on live servers so we do have the new jungle which has been causing quite a bit of controversy in the in the community as it is and some changes have been put in the works and are hopefully going to be hot fixed in according to some of the latest announcements on the forums. As uh, Purple Team picks up Tarek as their support bottom lane and a LeBlanc pick. Very bursty AP champion there, which with Anasus and Udyr is quite a smart pick. You've got two very tanky champions in those two junglers and solo top zero, and uh, they can do a lot of a lot of work to protect your Blanc and keep her alive. So she can do a full burst combo and get out again. There's the Aurelia for solo top for our purple team. Aurelia versus Nasus then is what we're going to have up there. That could prove to be quite an interesting lane. The two very strong champions. And it'll be interesting to see the way they build. And Morgana is our AP. So we have got a support Oriana, then there's no swaps going on there. And I would be very interested to see how support Oriana and an Ash lane is going to work out. Just an AD carry we picked up now by our purple team. Um, against that lineup, I'm expecting to see a, maybe a Tristana or a Caitlyn. But it could go down to a, what the champions, uh, what the players even know and can play well. There we go, we do have a Caitlyn with a cleanse. Cleanse have become more and more popular since they changed the changed flash and shortened its flash range. So we'll see how they get around to it. So we've got 20 seconds now with this countdown and then we will have a delay built into this spectator mode before we get to see what's going on, but the players will be in game any minute now. There's the delay period showing up. I'll just leave those champions up on the screen so you can keep an eye on it a bit more. Both our top lanes do have teleport running now, so we could see some teleport gangs down to the bottom lane, or even uh, contested dragons, it seems to be a common tactic. You drop a ward at the dragon and top lane teleports to it, making the tip in the fight, hopefully, in your favour, the way everything's going on. Well. It also helps them stay in lane and level up and farm really strong. Creep score being a major part of this game. 
Warwick, interestingly enough, doesn't have any escape summoners. He's just got his Smite and his Ignite, which are two... Smite is a commonly... Commonly misjudged spell. Some people think it's... You have to have it for jungling. Some people think you can't jungle without it. Um, which actually is untrue, especially with the new jungle changes. You can jungle without Smite, it's just very slow. And it does help towards late game. When you're doing the Barons and the Dragon fights, having that true damage really helps secure the kill and get the gold and the buffs for your team. But with the Ignite being a very aggressive smell, cancelling out healing and doing some true damage to your opponent champions, he doesn't have anything to get away. He doesn't have a flash, he doesn't have a ghost, he doesn't have a cleanse. So if he gets caught out by that opponent opposing team, he could die very quickly if he hasn't built tanky enough. We've got quite a bit of uh, team fight and space controlling abilities on that blue team as well. With Morgana's ultimate and Orianna's ultimate, if you're going to fight in the jungle against that team, you're going to take quite a bit of damage. As opposed to our purple team, which is very much single target. LeBlanc's all single target, Caitlyn's auto attack, her her W is, sorry, her Q is a bit AoE, but it's still not quite the same. Uh, Nasus and Udia, once they start getting going, depending on which stance Udia takes, could be a very solo target. And here we go, down to 40 seconds on our delay time now. The game should be well underway in, in there and the players are being... We should have something to watch. We do have another... Let's see, it's another four. Yeah, another four team... Three teams, sorry, set up in this tournament at the moment. So this game is actually the only one in the first round. It's uh, there have been three wins for all the other teams at the moment going through to the second round. So we're getting this best of three out of the way, and then we're straight on to the semi-finals. And now here we go into the loading screen. As League of Legends crashes, that's a great start. I do apologise. <laughs> Sorry about this, guys. I'll get straight back in as soon as I can. My lol did crash, which is annoying because I did test this out earlier and nothing <laughs> We didn't have any problem earlier. So it's it's the lovely, lovely Adobe Air we've got here. Uh, just hit the reconnect button and we should get in. Here we go. Sorry about that, guys. I have no idea what caused that, but we are in game now, as you can see. No skins for either team other than Irelia. Spelled out the last second. And now we let the game catch up again. 
There we go. That is a very, very small chat box, and I can't move it. Thank you, Riot. That was nice of you. Okay, so here we are. We're looking at the teams. We are only a minute into the game, so you haven't missed too much. Both teams are setting up to defend their junglers. They've changed the colours of the health bars since the last saw observer mode. That's going to make things nice and easy in team fights. So here we have our purple team, Aberdeen's B side, I believe, or Aberdeen's... No, Aberdeen's A side is purple team. Though. Setting up to defend Dudu with the LeBlanc and Nasus in this top bush. Nasus is going to start making his way to top lane soon, otherwise he's probably going to miss out on quite a bit of farm. And Warwick, not so well defended, but th pretty sure the CVs mean they know where everyone is and they feel quite safe. And that should have changed the exploit over, but it hasn't. Sorry about that. There we go. My hotkeys are broken. I'll fix that out for this game. And here we are. As the minions start arriving, and the leash leashes start going after our junglers, and the game gets underway. Let's watch bottom lane because I'm going to be quite intrigued as to how this support Ariana is going to work. This is something I have personally never seen before. Look at the starting items on both these champions. Oriana doesn't have a heal, so Asha's taking boots and three health potions. Gives her a nice bit of sustain in lane. Means she can take a bit of damage and still stay alive later on. As the stun comes out from Tarek, some early damage coming out from Caitlyn Tarek. That's a lot of damage thanks to the headshot proc and Caitlyn's Q. She has leveled Q first. A lot of Caitlyn's you'll see maybe take W because it helps defend their lanes, zone the bushes, and you can even play some defend your jungler in the early game. But as you can see, that's, that's certainly paid off in this chance, and uh, Caitlyn's already s starting to take a, a slight lead in this bottom lane as they start to zone zone Ariana and Ash back. As another stun comes out, and Ash starts taking even more damage. Although Tarek is taking some in return, so it is a bit of a risky play, but they have, both players have started popping some health potions as we take a look up to the top lane. Aurelia with a regrowth pendant, Nasus with the Doran's shield, which you don't see so often on top lane champions anymore. But if it's what he's practiced with, maybe we'll see something fancy for him. Aurelia her option to harass Nasus there and with a couple of CS. So if you actually look at the CS game, blue team's slowly pulling ahead, they're already 100 gold as a team up. Oh. Udir and Warwick. Udyr's actually cleared his jungler a lot faster than Warwick has at the moment. He's starting to make his way to top lane for a gang. You should go away because you haven't crashed. Udyr making his way into this bush. He is double buffed, so if he gets some damage off onto Irelia, this could really hurt her. She does have both the summoners. She does have her ghost, so she should be able to escape. They just need to get some vision of her in the bush. I expect a CV anytime soon. And there she goes. Nasa starts popping his... Puts his wither down, puts his... Down. A lot of damage coming out from Udi. He has got a slow flash blown from Udi, which is a, a bit excessive, if you ask me. But thanks to the ghost from Irelia, she does manage to get away more or less unscathed. She can pop a couple of health potions, and with that regrowth pendant, she'll be back at full health in no time. Farming as normal. It's a fairly even trade, considering both champions blue summoners. And Warwick is now stealing some XP and some gold from Nasus. Ash has been forced to go back already, although she's obviously quite low on health. She's bought a ward and a couple more health potions, but Warwick runs around and makes a nuisance of himself. I don't know if you spotted that, that's the new animation for Warwick's Q. Q spell, that's the first time I've seen that myself. <laughs> Binding comes out from Morgana, she just skims past the block. However, Morgana's doing quite well in the farm game, she's beating the block in that mid. It all changes when LeBlanc hits 6 though, which is not far off. The burst damage on that LeBlanc is horrible. Here we go. Two spells and that half health on Morgana. Morgana's E is a magic wrist spell immune shield, which she can place on any champion on her team, which will be a big part in stopping LeBlanc's damage, but it only if she can get it cast in time. Uda's still playing around in this top lane with, with Aurelia. In fact, I don't even think he's left, looking at those levels. So he's been there for that whole time. 
another stun comes out from Tarek, but it's a bit too far out of range for Caitlyn to take advantage of it this time. Blue team still pulling even further ahead in the gold time. Only 300 got ahead just from creeps. So still waiting on first blood, which could come in mid anytime soon. Look at the way LeBlanc's harassing Anna Morgana. She's got plenty of mana left even without a blue. Thanks to her Dorans ring. Even. Morgana has gone back. I must have missed that. She's got boots, health potions, and a Dorans ring. So it's quite a bit of gold on that Morgana. And she's still keeping up in levels with, with LeBlanc. If you check the XP bar on the left, it's fairly close. Aurelia harassing Nass has been more pushing the minions into a tower. Uh, she's out of mana. She has got her teleport, so she might simply be looking to go back sometime soon as Udin makes his way towards mid. He's in a good position to catch Morgana right now. She's got no mana, she can't stop him. And LeBlanc's, LeBlanc's got full mana, she's just got to wait on cooldowns. This could end up in first blood right now. Stun doesn't quite come out from Udi because Morgana manages to pop her spell shield just in time to keep herself alive. She might not be so lucky next time unless she gets some mana back, which is why she's recording right now. Lots more damage coming out from Caitlyn Tarek bottom lane, and there's your first blood. It's a cheeky couple of mini hits following her down that road, as well as an auto attack from Caitlyn. Who to spend some more time in the longs lane? I must admit this is a bit confusing. He is covering the lane now; it makes sense he's pushing it. But the whole point of these new jungle lane changes is uh, junglers can spend a lot more time in the jungle now. The creek camps spawn a lot faster, so you can farm just as hard in the jungle as you can in the lane. So in fact, he's he's staying in this lane and in top lane after ganking for NASA for quite so long. It's, it's a bit confusing. There's a ping down on the blue team's blue buff because they know it's up and I think they might be looking to steal it. But Udi's going to go and take blue buff, probably for a Blanc, will she uh, make her way down there in a minute, which will give her a lot more sustain in lane. Um, maybe she's not. Udi going to take it for himself, I think so. Or, no, blue Blanc's just taking the time to get across there. So now that's going to make Blanc an even more fearsome sight in that mid lane against Morgana. More or less unlimited mana, it really increased her mana regen and even her cooldown reduction, so she's going to pop out a lot more spells. Let's we'll see how much gold people have got right about now. Our richest champion is, is Caitlyn, thanks to that first blood. Nearly 300 gold ahead of LeBanc and Morgana, who are fairly even in their mid lane actually. 45 to 41 creeps. A lot of creep camps left up for work. He still hasn't picked up blue buff from Morgana, despite the fact that he knows LeBlanc has their blue buff. So it's going to be quite hard for Morgana in mid right now. But there we go, as I say, that they go and start their blue buff. Auric does still have his smite, and there it goes. And we should see Morgana pick that up any minute now. There was Aurelia going back, picking up a Philosopher's Stone and a Health Potion. Looks like she's going to go double gold for five items. So come late game, she's going to be a very rich Aurelia, but she's not going to have very much damage early on. Nasa still hasn't gone back, so he's going to be carrying quite a bit of gold. Nearly 1,600 gold on that Nasa right now. So if he goes back, he's going to come back quite strong. Oh, we're coming out from Caitlyn. Just a bit of harassment on Ash, some free damage before Caitlyn goes back and buys her first round of items. Be interesting to see what those are. She's got... Again, nearly 2,000 gold thanks to that first blood. So she's going to come back with BF sword and boots. She's going to do a lot of damage now, and Ash is going to have to be very careful. Dark finding comes up from Morgana. Lands on a creep, but that great spell shield means she didn't take any points of health damage from the harass from LeBlanc. As you can see they're both now running around with blue buff, both on full mana, just spamming spells onto each other, picking up as much CS as they can. 
There's NASA's come back with he's come back with a ninja tab eye, which is dodge boots, which dodge interesting enough is being removed from the game fairly soon. So make the most of those before he leaves. And a, a heart of gold, which is another gold for five item. So again he's gonna be quite rich NASA's, but not much damage yet unless he gets a lot of losses on his Q. Every time NASA's hits a minion with kills a minion with his Q active, it gets another three damage onto it. So come late game it can be a very scary move, even if he hasn't got very many items. Some Rass coming out onto the red, but she's got her ult up, so she's life stealing the majority of the match. As we see a pink ward going down from Udyr onto dragons, they are looking for a dragon kill fairly soon, just making sure their opponents can't see what's going on. You see we've got wards in this bush for both teams. So they might have an idea, the blue team, when they start this dragon, but they're not going to know for sure. As Nasus comes down towards mid lane for a possible gank, he did pop his ultimate, so that's it. And the Bronx starts one made some spells onto Morgana. Takes a lot of damage in return, actually. And Udi comes in to try and scare her off. But it's, it's already over. Warwick now playing around in that bush with a red buff. Let's see if he can counter that. We're going to land her. Lands us there on a minion again. And bottom lane, that's fine. Arrow comes out from Ash, there's a lot of damage output going on to Caitlyn now. Exhaust down on Caitlyn so she can't run away. Exhaust in conjunction with that slow from Ash is going to make her a very slow Caitlyn. She does have to flash, otherwise that could have ended very differently. Unfortunately there was no mana on Oriana or Ash there, so they couldn't really do much more than auto attack. It was a good move from Ash and Oriana to push that Caitlyn away, despite the fact she's so far ahead in that lane at the moment. Ash has been back, but all she's bought were a Dorange Blade and an Attack Speed Blade. But that was very early in the game. She's probably carrying yeah, nearly a thousand gold right now. As is Tarek, who's also not been back. But Tarek in support doesn't have any CS. He's given that all to his AD carry. So his, his gold gain is purely passive throughout the game. I do apologize, there's a gank up top. Uja just, just bullying the Aurelia a bit, pushing the lane for Nessus. So might get some power damage done here. The Aurelia sneaking in and getting a cheeky cool score. Warwick doing a bit of a, a bit of a jungle invasion because he knows Uja's top and he's fairly safe. That's the uh, the new buff from those creeps that we haven't seen before. The big creeps in each camp, we can't see them on these ones. Have a, have a quick healing healing buff on it, you'll see it on the golem here, there's one golem bigger than the other. So the aim is to, s to aim and not let, sorry, the aim is for people not to have to use health pots when it's jungling them, making it a bit more low level friendly for people that don't have runes. That's where it comes down towards the bottom lane to try and gank it. Was Wardy so was spotted but Ash and Oriana don't seem to want to join in, so he just backs out and clears up the traps. Morgana forced back again by the looks of it. Both blue buffs have run out for the mid lanes, however, purple teams has respawned, so we'll be looking for LeBlanc to pick that up again soon. Probably when Uda's finished playing around in that top lane. minute mark. No one's quite above 100 CS yet, which is, is slightly unusual. But every game's different, and uh, while obviously you aim for the highest CS you can, you can't always get it depending on how your opponents are playing. Whoa, the pink water dragon has run out for our purple team now, so they, they can't actually see what's going on. That is purely blue, and they obviously weren't trying to get that, that dragon early. Dragon buff being 190 gold for every player on your team, which is quite nice when you're when you're trying to get that small leg up in this early part of the game. Really picking up red buff for himself. As really pushes Nasus back to the tower again. Quite a bit of harass coming out there from that ultimate. Lots more damage going out onto Kaylin and onto Ariana. As the minions pick her up there with that last little bit of damage. Ultimate oh, from Caitlyn does take Ash very low. Flash from Tarek. <laughs> nice pick up there. Flash, stun and radiance from Tarek does just enough damage with an auto attack to help it out. Pick up a double kill for that bottom lane. 
putting Kaylin even further ahead. I don't know, I'm sorry, I missed a tower dive up top. Warwick and Irelia picking up Nasus. But Warwick did go down to the tower and a little bit helpful from Udyr. And now Udyr taking down Irelia. Irelia with no mana, she's not going to win that fight. But she does force Udyr to back away. I'm not sure that's the right call on Udyr's part. He could have won that fight quite easily with the mana he's got. The turtle stance being so strong. But Ash and Kate. Tarek and Caitlin, sorry, did pick up that bottom tower, so it's 150 gold for everyone on purple team, putting their gold advantage quite a bit ahead of our blue team. Tarek's making his way up towards mid lane, he might try and gank, the stun on Tarek is quite strong when it comes to ganking, he's better than most supports, but it's not who you'd normally expect to do it, as is, you can see, he's just backing off, he was CV'd so they did spot him, and he planted that ward and walked away. Here's Warwick picking up blue buff. We should see Morgana going across there any minute now. Doesn't look like she wants to just yet. Just keeping keeping her on that tower so she can't come and interfere. We should see Morgana go across there. As LeBron goes to pick up the blue buff for the purple team. And there we go, there goes Morgana. As Ash and, Ash and Orion left a free farm bottom now because Caitlyn and Tarek have decided to, to leave it. As there's no tower. I say that as they return to try and try and stop them losing their own tower now. They might catch Ash by surprise here. Oh, Tarek was a little bit keen. Didn't quite get away. That's a lot of damage that comes out from Kate in there. Nice arrow from Ash, but she did turn around at the wrong second, trying to pick up that Tarek kill. Exhaust goes out on Tarek, it should have been on Caitlyn. And Ash falls again. There's a good bit of damage coming out from Oriana and Ash though. They just needed a bit more focus and some slightly better planted summoners. Purple team take this as a call to pick up Dragon and can put their gold advantage even further ahead. Udi left a tank on his own at the moment. Normally you'd see Caitlyn head down there for that AD damage. But level 10, Udi's plenty strong enough to solo it. And there we go, blue buff again on both mid champions. We do see our first couple of hundred CS on Morgana and Irelia. And you see Aurelia's now got both of her gold per 5 items, she's going to be a very rich champion. 4,700 gold, top of her team by quite some distance. In fact, she's only been beaten by Caitlyn, and Caitlyn's got 3 kills. So that's that's a good bit of farm going on up top. As Caitlyn has helped since so it's 100 minutes. Warwick is found in the jungle by some great ward placement from Tarek, as the 3 man gank takes him down relatively easily. Udyr try and make him mid silence goes out. Not quite, not quite land in the snare in time. But a lot more free damage from LeBlanc takes takes Morgana really low. Bit of a jungle steal from that bottom lane. Ash has gone towards mid to help out Morgana by the looks of it, which is an odd choice because Ash will get blown up by LeBlanc as soon as her spells come off cooldown. Got ten seconds before things are going to start getting quite dicey. However, Ash has been warned now by a team that Caitlyn and Tarek are coming through that jungle to find her, and she starts to back off. Top lane's relatively passive, and both champions are out of mana. There's not much they can do to each other other than auto attack. So they're just farming. There's Irelia C. Zudir head towards the river. She's running away. Double wards from the purple team in that river bush. Slight mistake. Quite a scary looking gang squad sitting there in that mid lane now. Kaylin does show herself. I'm not sure if the blue team spotted it, but that ward from Warwick will, will show exactly what's going on. As Ariana's left alone to farm bottom lane, which could prove to be quite a, a turning point in this game. If Ariana can get, get her some farm up, okay, she's playing support role early on, but she can do quite a bit of damage on her own. We'll see, have to see how that goes. Gang coming out from Udyr is not much going to come from this. Aurelia is on very high health. There's no mana from Nasus. Aurelia does have a ghost, so even if she needed it, she'd have been fine. But nothing much happened. Just a bit more damage onto the tower from those creeps. Ash might get caught out by Udyr here on her way up. But she's playing it plenty safe and ducks in the way before he sees anything going on. I must admit, this is quite an uneventful game. I just mean, hope the next couple of rounds in this best of three should pick up. But we'll see how it goes. More harassment coming out from Aurelia, pushing, 
pushing Nasus that bit further back. The Philosopher's Stone on Irelia means she's going to start winning that lane if Nasus stays with no mana. The regen she has means she can pop out a lot more abilities and a lot more consistency, whereas Nasus is going to be stuck on 100 odd mana for quite some time, especially if he casts AoE abilities like that all the time. It's going to knock it right down. She could probably half health him there or knock him right back to the tower if she wanted to, especially with her arm up. And Warwick coming out of the lane, they could they could collapse in on him right here. They have got it warded so they knew where he was there. But it really decides it's it's not gonna happen as he gets out just before. It would be really nice of Riot to put an invisible mode in this game. But luckily, I don't think my streams are high enough quality for you to read the chat that's going on. If you can, I do apologise. Four K gold advantage now for our purple team. Five kills up, and a tower and a dragon. I do apologise for missing that top. Nasus takes down Warwick with some help from Udia, and Irelia is going to go down as well. It's a nice gank there from Udia. Nasus has obviously been back and teleported with his full mana and his ult over there, giving him some passive life still. And this will be top tower for purple team as well now. So that's going to put their gold advantage so much further ahead. As you can see, 150 gold now for everyone else on that purple team. Caitlyn and LeBlanc seem to have swapped roles for a little bit now, which could cause problematic for Ash, as that LeBlanc's going to do a lot of damage to her. She's Luckily, lucky slow coming out from Ash, keeping her alive for just this little bit longer. But a Loblonk with a needlessly large rod and an amplifying tone is a lot of AP. Normally, I'd have expected to see these teams group up now. We start seeing some team fights 5v5s, 4v5s. As LeBlanc opens up on Ash, nice dodge of that snare from Ash, and the arrow just about saving her, saving her from disaster. Tarek left the lane as well, which is putting it into a little bit into Oriana and Ash's favour, and it could have gone very differently if that Tarek stun and ultimate was there. Tarek's ultimate being AOE damage and increased AP and AD for surrounding champions, so LeBlanc would have been even more fearsome. 150 CS now then for Irelia and Morgana. It's going to make them quite rich champions. But unfortunately this is not quite enough to carry that whole team now as a 7 kill advantage for the purple side and 7,000 gold. Just misses that dark binding as LeBlanc takes down Ash bottom lane. Walking away relatively unscathed but Warwick coming in now he doesn't have his, well, he does have his ultimate, I apologise does catch her there and Oriana's not quite awake enough and the flash and W combo from LeBlanc is enough to keep her alive. A little bit of miscommunication there from our blue team. If, if Oriana had joined in with that one spell would have been enough. Would have been enough to take down LeBlanc. It's as the game's gone on for 25 minutes at the moment, I don't think the stranger at 20 is going to be something we're gonna see. Tarek and Udis collapse in on Oriana. She's going to take a lot of damage here. She's got no farm. W goes out giving her increased movement speed. She might just about get away as she shields Warwick. And she does. Nice save there from Oriana. Caitlyn and Nasus then moving around the blue team jungle. They did check blue buff but it is gone as they now move in to start putting a lot of damage down onto Aurelia. Slow goes down from Nasus. It's going to get a quite out. Another slow from Caitlyn, but unfortunately, it's just too tanky. As it is, Phage, Zeal, Heart of Gold, and Philosopher's Stone on. A lot more damage actually there from Caitlyn. That's a good amount of damage after a Bloodthirster and a Zeal. It means Aurelia might go down if they try anything else, but Morgana's come through the jungle now, just to keep her safe. We're still looking at only one dragon kill in this entire game from Udyr. If blue team could pick up two, two or three dragons now, they could possibly bring this game back. But we'll have to wait and see. Ideally, we were looking at one of the teams possibly taking a Baron anytime soon. But at the moment, the ward coverage isn't quite there. And as none of the supports are running around with oracles, 
Udi, um, I mean, Tarek did have one in his inventory for a while, and it's there. I just, I just can't see it. Tarek does have an oracle, so we could see some ward clearing and and some barren attempts from the purple team. But blue, blue team are in no position to try anything like that just now. Morgana starts getting some tower damage on that mid tower, but Leblanc comes in to stop her with her blue buff. A nice shield from Morgana saves her from the majority of damage. In fact, it saves her from all the damage. There's quite a shield going down there. His rank is only rank 3, so that shield's only going to get stronger. And Udi is picking up another dragon for that purple team. So going to put them in nearly 5k. Sorry, a lot more. My maths is upon me. A lot further ahead than we go. See, there's no wriggles on Udyr, so that's a very slow dragon kill. He has got a wit's end and spirit of desire, so he's going to be very tanky, especially in turtle stance. Damage goes out onto Morgana, but she does flash away before Caitlyn and Udyr manage to start anything up on her. Tarek coming in through this jungle, he could get caught out here by the Oriana and the Warwick, but Warwick ran the wrong way and didn't manage to pick that up. Here we go, it looks like we might see our first team fight of the game now. All, f all ten players grouping up in the middle of the map. Nasa's hiding away in the wings there. Kind of needs to be at the front, he's one of the tanks for that purple team. Ariana just throwing out some harassment with that ball into the bushes. Let's see, purple, blue team, sorry, have no no vision right now of where any of these purple guys are unless they are standing in range of the minions as all their wards have been killed off by that Tarek. Aureli goes top to farmers, Nasa pops his ghost and runs into the middle of the team fight. He does only land his slow on Morgana thanks to the spell shield she gets away and Ash gets blown up. Switch targets to Morgana, nice ultimate from Ariana, saving Morgana from a little bit more damage but she might get caught out by herself and she does even flashing just a little bit too late to save herself. Udi takes quite a bit of tower damage thanks to that snare, but he gets away as does Caitlyn and Blanc. <laughs> Taking in turns to tank the tower even though there's no one there to kill as Irelia starts pushing that top lane and gets the first tower for our light blue team. Stun goes out to Warwick there from Tarek, but there's nothing much the team can do as they were slightly out of position and just stealing some jungle creeps again. There's a good push there from our purple team up that middle lane though, putting them a long way in front. And uh, they're going to have to see something special now from this purple t blue team, sorry, to bring themselves back into this. Bloodthirster and Phantom Dancer now on that Caitlyn. 602. She's going to be doing a lot of damage, especially on those headshot procs. It's going to be even higher. Those of you that don't know, headshot is every eighth shot or s four shots if she's standing in a bush. It does double damage. Light Blue looking to take a dragon, but it's already been taken down by our purple team, Zuda. Ash getting caught out by Caitlyn, taking a lot of damage. Arrow goes, does go down, Cleanse has to come out from Caitlyn. It really chases her down, but she's just a little bit too quick. And Aurelia on her own, and a nice net from Caitlyn taking her over the wall. Back into Udi's safety, but Oriana's there to meet her, and she might fall. She does, nice pull from Morgana. It's worried, ults. Ults Udi, and it does go down with the help of the knight. Nice five man gank left from our blue team. They should be able to get this bottom tower from it, gets us a nice little bit of gold. It's just what we need to see them doing. Warwick does look to tank the tower, but it's on too much health for him to do that, and it would not end well at all. Nice defence coming in from LeBlanc and Tarek here, though. They are both very single target champions. While Tarek's out abilities do do AoE, he doesn't really, doesn't really do much, but they do decide to sacrifice that tower and let the blue team take it for free. Our blue team seem a little bit scared that they're being watched, but but they're not. 
other than the wards, there's no champions nearby. Aurelia does go up on her own, she could have been taken down there, possibly, by the burst on that Blanc, who has finished her death plan now. Morgana just misses that binding from the wall. They could steal a blue buff here, which would set LeBlanc back a little way, but I don't think they're looking to do that. They've all backed off, and they can see already a recalling. One of the players, Ash, has disconnected from our light blue team. We'll have to see whether she comes back anytime soon. Morgana does take down that mid tower, so there's a little bit more gold, and they have closed the gold gap now to, to 6,000 gold. Yeah, apparently, Ash is restarting his PC. Blue buff on LeBlanc. It's Caitlyn starts pushing that top lane. Still no wards anywhere near Baron right now, so any team could sneak in there and pick it up for free if they wanted to. And that Dragon Timer should be back up fairly soon, and the purple team will know it, considering Uda took it out last time. And another ward kill for Tarek. 52 minion kills for Tarek. Now, I don't know if they fixed it, but last time I checked, wards counted as a minion. So that's either a lot of wards, or he's been left alone to farm a lane for some time. Nassus and LeBlanc, that's a very scary combo walking around the top part of this river. The slow on Nassus and the snare from LeBlanc could do a lot of damage to someone as it really starts beating up Caitlyn. Serious damage output there from LeBlanc, despite how tanky Aurelia is, takes her down in a matter of seconds. However, Aurelia did do quite a bit of damage to Caitlyn, so that does bode well, possibly, for a couple of team fights we may have later on. There's a Witsen just finish up on Aurelia there. Gonna give it even more magic resist. Unfortunately, <laughs> Ash still isn't back in, but she hasn't even finished her Infinity Edge yet, which is a big thing on Ash. She really needs that damage. Item. Dragon is back up there, and purple team are going to push mid and will probably take it on their way out, providing things don't go horribly wrong. We'll have to wait and see. Warwick getting caught a little bit out of position here by the dragon team. Does take a lot of damage and a snare and a heal, but it's not quite enough. Yeah, Nasus is taking that tower, that is a massive stun from Morgana, hitting every single member of that purple team. But unfortunately there's just not enough blue players alive, or not enough damage from these blue players to make the most out of it, as Oriana starts getting focused down. A lot of tower tanking going on by Nasus, and he does fall to the tower. Caitlyn is now got a tower on him, she's not going to take much more damage. One more tower hit, and that's a dead Caitlyn, but Morgana goes down to Udia. Sorry, she does go down to Caitlyn, that's steel. And then it looks to me like the purple team are just going to mop up here, and they'll definitely get this in here, but we may even see a surrender vote because Ash is still missing. GG is being called by both, both teams. We'll have to wait and see what they decide to do. That's a lot of damage on that LeBlanc. That is a very... Even a red buff on LeBlanc, just to be sure. Red buff does now apply on abilities, so red buff on an AP caster like that isn't necessarily a bad thing. If you land your silence on LeBlanc and then slow the champion from that, that's going to make it a lot easier to land your snare, so maybe they're onto something. Maybe that wasn't just a mistake because she killed the champion with a red buff. And there you go, there's Uli picking up that dragon on his way out again, as I said before, as Ash just reconnects. Surrender vote did go out for the blue team, but it failed because Ash came in just before it timed out. And so it went three to one. A lot of ward coverage here for that purple team. Let's see. I can do this way. That's a lot of map vision there. Wards all the way through the jungle and all the way around Baron as Warwick gets taken. Warwick does take down LeBlanc. Sorry, I thought it was the other way around. Nice one on Warwick. And our blue team's vision is is minimal other than their own jungle and the minions. Looks like the players are going to play this out. I'll be interested to see if 
purple team decide to play this any tactically, or if they just group up and walk down that middle lane right now. I honestly could not see them losing a team fight at the moment. They're 10,000 gold ahead. The big damage on the uh, blue team is Ash, and she's not really got big damage. And that Caitlyn LeBlanc combo is going to rip through anything blue team has. Blue team do look like they're grouping up to Baron. Which a Desperation Baron at this point isn't the worst call. The wards have run out on it for purple teams, so they wouldn't see it happening if they got lucky. But they don't know that as blue because they don't have any oracles and they they were just collecting blue buff there for, for Morgana. Ash is about to get caught out, this is gonna be massive damn half health by Caitlyn's ultimate. Aurelia still miles away, it's a lot of damage going out to Morgana. Nice nice I can't even just call Zonya's Hourglass, sorry, no Zonya's Hourglass is going to keep herself alive, but unfortunately it's just not enough with the damage of that purple team now. And that's going to end the game there. Aurelia on Nasus, that's a lot of damage up from Aurelia, but unfortunately standing in that, standing in that AoE from Nasus reduces your magic resist and you're not going to stay alive very long standing there. And there goes the Surrender, vote 5-0, GG's played, and we'll have to move on to the next game.